it has to look good. good. Out of the way, boys. <laughs> I feel like a designer here. You know? And I think we need more of that. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is a podcast for creators. creators. All right. Um, okay, let me do the intro. Then. Welcome to Sibby and Kate's Circling Back, a podcast for creatives hosted by myself and Kate. Hello, friend. And uh, we are back at Comic-Con Cape Town for day two. Yeah. Lots of fun, lots of people here, lots of costumes, lots of really interesting creative things that are um, lots of on display. <laughs> lots of Naruto, yeah. yeah. Lots of that. Um, and we're speaking with a really talented guest. Uh, his name is Kyle Yankees. Kyle, um, we understand that you're a writer. You, don't, you do all sorts of cool stuff. Please uh, tell, tell us about yourself a little bit. Um, hi Kate, I'm Sylvie. It's so nice to be yeah. on here. Hi. hi to everybody that is listening. Yeah. Uh, my name is Carl Janchis. I'm an oh, author sorry. of 13 Janchis Janchis. It depends Janchis. if you're English or Afrikaans. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, okay. I'm an author of 13 novels. I'm an adventurer by heart. Oh. Um, last year I walked from Mitchell's Plain to Sierras. Whoa. So uh, that's on YouTube. Um, oh and then goodness. I did. Um, I'm a martial artist, I have my black belt in ninjutsu. Okay. Um, I'm currently a teacher at a high school, oh. although my degrees are all in biology, so I'm a biologist also. Interesting, oh. okay. Um, I began writing in 2013 when I finished my matric, yeah. uh, but I only managed to publish in 2020. Okay. So it was a seven year journey of okay. writing, getting rejected, writing, rejected, and so forth. I see. But 2020, I finally made my mark, and since then it's been going Did very well. Did you say 13 books? I have 13 books currently published. 13. So, um, 2020, 2020, I, 2020 I published four. Yeah. yeah. And then 2021, my goal was to write and publish 10 books. Yeah. And I put it all over Facebook. In one year. You know? Yeah, in one year. And then I didn't make it to 10 books. I made it to nine. Um, I was exhausted by the end of the year. <laughs> Actually, I haven't written another book since. You know, I'm sure. I began writing again this year. Um, okay. But... I don't know if it's going to be published this year because it's um, much bigger than anything I've ever written. Okay. Most of my books is about sixty to 80,000 words. Okay. This one is going to be 250,000. So Whoa. it's Whoa. a bigger um, challenge than what I've yeah, taken on before. So. Amazing stuff. I mean, I think it's am amazing like how you managed to do that. Like, like how did you get your book published? Like, That's such an incredible yeah. story. Um, when I began writing my first book in 2013, I wrote and um, it was just a thing, basically me writing from my head. Yeah. Um, and I wrote and I thought, okay, this is this is a winner because when I read it, I loved it. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I believe, you know, if you have an idea and it just doesn't want to leave you, then this is an idea from God. Uh -huh. So you know, I, that idea just didn't want to leave me, and I wrote it and I sent it through. And when the publishers hardly ever give you criticism, they never give criticism. They'll just say. This is not for us. Oh. Um, but one publisher responded, they said, great story, bad writing. Oh. So that's what I had to go on. So I had to polish my writing over that seven years. Um, how to use more adjectives. Um, I'd spend a lot of time on one scene, just how to make that uh, scene more engaging. Yeah. So that's what I learned. But the biggest lesson that I learned was the power of planning. Yeah. Okay. So my first book that got published um, in 2018, 2019, around there I wrote it. And halfway into it, I realized there's something very, very wrong with this book. Oh. So I deleted everything that I wrote. Oh. It's about 44,000 words just Whoa. gone. Whoa. And I watched a video called The Power of Planning, okay. which is um, if you're going to build a skyscraper or something with yeah. great value, you need a blueprint. Okay. But if you're going to build a ship, there's no blueprint needed. So oh, that's what I, I learned. What so yeah. I spent the next three months just planning the book out. Okay. Fleshing out the characters, every scene, every chapter. Okay. I learned how to plot. And then after that, when I wrote, that became the first book that I got published. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And is it obviously published locally? Like different publishers? Um, same publisher? It's, um, the first book was uh, published by a publisher called Marie Herba Edgevers. Okay. That's in okay. KwaZulu Natal. Okay. And then I got my second book published. Um, by Reach Publishers in also in Kuala Okay. Nice. And then after that, I decided I want to go self-publishing um, because traditional publishing is a bit slower than 
okay. what I enjoy. Yeah, um, for example, the first book took six six months to publish. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I didn't realize And in 2021, when I wanted to publish, you know, the 10 books, I had to go much quicker. Yeah, yeah. So I did that self-publishing. Self so I could choose. I, I outsourced a lot of things. I decided who I want for the editing, who yeah. I want for cover design, all of those things, oh, and formatting. Nice. Yeah. Um, I did the formatting myself. I had to learn how to do all yeah. of that. Um, so I could, you know, release a book every month. That's what yeah. I did. Um, the problem with self-publishing is obviously the funds. That's yeah. Because um, I was gonna say, like, you know, <laughs> that's a as far as mm -hmm. I will tell you, yeah. since 2020, I have spent about 70,000 rand just getting all my books published. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, um, that sounds about right. And I've only made back about 20, 25,000 rand. Okay. So this so, is like a pure, like, yeah. big passion. Like. So I'm, I'm at a deficit. Yeah. But I'm not in debt because I know how to budget. You know? Okay. I know how to oh, budget. Right. I'm in deficit. Yeah. But I wouldn't trade Plan any of it for the world because I'm enjoying what I'm doing okay. yeah. and I'm getting better at it every day. That's yeah, it, yeah. yeah. I mean, your books are yeah, like interesting, amazing. like themes and topics. It seems like a mixture to me. Tell me if I'm going wrong here. It's like a bit of religion, but also like fantasy. fantasy yeah. It's yeah. like all there sorts is of a things, mix, like um, themes happening. I'm a born again Christian. So okay. um, first when I began writing, I, I wanted fantasy yeah. um, okay. because, you know, a real world is not enough for me. <laughs> oh, there we go, there we go. That and then okay. um, after all the rejections, I thought, okay, let me try maybe, uh, maybe fantasy is not my genre, let me try Christian fiction. Okay. So I wrote a Christian fiction novel. Um, I'm adventure at art, so I wrote adventure. Mm -hmm. Basically, whatever I personally enjoy, that's what I write. Okay. Um, my book, The Gloat, is pure adventure and comedy. That's the um, newest one, right? No, that's the one in the uh, beginning of 2021. Beginning of 2021. Okay. Okay. Um, so, that yeah. book came close to winning an award. I came oh. top five. Oh, okay. So just fell nice. short of it. Um, the Gloat. The Gloat yeah. stands for greatest loser of all time. <laughs> 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 what I wanted was, I am a biologist, yeah. so I was watching this documentary about um, a hidden dinosaur in the Congo called uh, Mokale and Bembe. Yeah. And that's and I thought, oh I'd love to go and I researched how much does it cost to go to the Congo? Yeah. And they said ten thousand dollars. And I thought, oh I don't have the money for that. So let me write a story about somebody who does go. Okay, and, okay. Um just for fun, let me make him a loser. Yeah. So, you know, the <laughs> color. Um and I was so excited to write that book, I wrote that book in 12 days. Yeah, um, yeah. And I just did some editing and sent it through the publishers, publishers accepted it first oh time. Oh my goodness. Um, so that's so cool. I, I was very excited about that's it. A, that's so cool. That's it's so excellent. cool that you've like explored different themes and topics and you're trying different things. I always tell people, write what you enjoy. Yeah. Because if you don't enjoy it, your, your reader won't enjoy it at all. Yeah, this is and, true. Um, that's how you get uh, what they call a writer's block. If you're writing for the, for for the public, itself, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. going to get the writer's block. Write what you enjoy and then edit for the public. Okay. Oh, it sounds like you're like probably the most fearless person I I've know, met right? in like <laughs> many years. Oh, um, I'm an adventurer, like I said. As you, yeah. um, so with my walk to Sierras, I yeah. decided I write books about people who go on long adventures. Let me try yeah. doing my own. Yeah. So last year, me and my dog, I took me and my dog. Um, a two-day walk to Sierras. Yeah. Um, day one, I slept in the toilet in Paul. Okay. Um, in the engine garage. The people was very nice to let me take a cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, from there, I walked to Sierras. Um, it was a long walk. My body was destroyed. I can't say. No, that seems tough. Left me shot. The right ankle swollen. I couldn't feel my toes. I had sunburn. Lips were chafed. Yeah. Oh, it was terrible. My back was sore. My goodness. Sure. sure. No. I mean, that's that's God was good. Bravery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were carried through. That's for sure. Um, like, so would you say that it's, and I'm, I'm assuming um, that because of your your faith and your belief that that has empowered you to to be a go-getter yeah, and to like make sure that you strike. Once you get inspiration, you knock it out. Yeah. Deliver um, it to the world. I'm a big believer in uh, prophecy. Mm. Okay. I'm a big believer in prophecy. Uh, when I began writing in 2013, I went to a prayer meeting. Yes. And at the prayer meeting, there was this prophet who said he sees me writing stacks and stacks of books. And at the time, nobody knew that I was writing. Uh, so I figured, okay, this is, you know, from God. Yeah. Um, in 2016, 2017, around there, I went to another prayer meeting. And somebody said, they see me publishing my first book in 2020. And I said, well, no, Lord, no, this must be from the devil. <laughs> 2020 is, you know, three years later. Um, I don't want that, you know. But 2020, my first book came out. Okay. So I believe yeah. um, this is a gift from God. 
okay. and if something is from God, it's your uh, it's your responsibility to act on it okay. and to polish your skill in it. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. I'm now doing courses on um, how to market myself, uh, email oh, yeah. marketing, yeah. and I feel like if you want to learn something, pay for it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm paying for, to learn how to uh, market myself. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be very important, like yeah. getting this stuff out there. So most of my sales is actually ebooks. Okay. Um, I'm speaking tonight, uh, five o'clock. Um, on the state of fantasy and adventure okay. in South Africa because fantasy and adventure does not sell in South Africa. Okay. Um, you'll see there's a big you know, fantasy convention yeah, but yeah, yeah, fantasy books in itself doesn't sell well. Oh, wow. um, That's yeah. Most of my books is e-books that sells. Okay. Now and again I'll sell a few physical books. Okay. 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 If you had to give um, any advice to like an up and coming writer, somebody who wants to be like you, what would you tell them? Um, I would say, number one, write what you enjoy. Okay. Don't ever write for the public. Write what you enjoy. It will flow so much easier. And then when you're done writing, now you do all the editing for the public. So when you edit, you must imagine someone else reading it. Okay. That's the so first write for you and edit for the public. Exactly. Okay, that's, that's, that's the first thing I would say. Yeah, like number yeah. two, have a map. Especially yeah. if you're doing fantasy, have a map. Yeah. Because as soon as you have a map, now you have a guide for how the, the character is going to travel, where they're going. You can plot specific points where stories is happening. Yeah. So you have your map. Number three, don't give up. You're going to have a, a few uh, rejections. Yeah. Um, maybe you're lucky and your first book is, you know, that it. Yeah. Yeah. But don't give up if it's a few rejections. Keep going for it, especially if you have a love for it. Keep going for it. Um, and then, yeah. Ask questions, do course, courses, watch a lot of videos. That's what I've done. Okay. Uh, amazing. That's amazing. Yo, like I read um, a, a bit of your second book from I think I, I, I saw that. Yeah, from the yeah that series. I, I believe it's called In Inheritance. Yeah. And I was really like impressed by just like the first chapter because like I, I I hadn't read the first book. I wasn't sure what I was going to see. But it was really interesting how you were like tying in, um, and uh, you were tying in uh, this guy's faith and also his his um, insecurity of like figuring out whether he'll be able to actually perform yeah. that magic trick yes. of bringing something back to life. Yes. And it made me and, like when you mention um, your background in biology, um, does that play a big role in like the? with how you intertwine the, the logic of the magic in the stories that you Yes, so um, there's a quote that I always use when I do an interview. Yes. I say, Are you really? your interest is what makes you interesting. Uh -huh. So I'm a biologist, yeah. so I love putting biology in my books. Yeah. I'm adventurous, so I love putting adventure. I'm a martial artist, I love putting that in my books. Yeah. And that's what's going to make my books interesting, my personal interests. Yeah. Um, so for that specific book, what I did was... Um, I first I struggled to write the book because um, because I'm a, a born again Christian. I thought, how does fantasy play with regards to your faith? Oh. Okay, yeah, that's um, an interesting. But then I realized God is a very creative God, and He created us to be creative, yeah. and He's a supernatural God. So we should be supernatural in our creativity. Um, and then what that I put in, for example, um, I wanted it to be an underdog story. So um, at the end of book one, He gets a power that is not. That he didn't actually want. Yeah. So now he's struggling. How can I use this power um, mm -hmm. to advance myself yeah. and to advance the, the world that he's in? Yeah. Um, that's what I try to do. And then I put a lot of biology, a lot of animals in there. I love yeah, animals. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> There's going to yeah. be always a lot of animals in my books. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I love that. Oh, I love that. I love really that. exciting stuff. And like really well done on being so prolific. Yeah, yeah. And like, like such so a quickly as well. Yeah. Just like understanding that you have. It, it, like you've taken it in your hands and you decided I'm gonna do this. Yeah. I've got the energy, I've got the time, I'm gonna do it, it's done. Yeah, I'm a young That's man. Really amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I take a lot of afternoon naps. And oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> afternoon naps is important to me because yeah. um, I work full time. Yeah. So when I get I'm home, yeah, I take an afternoon yeah. nap and then in the evenings is when I write. Start I about 10 o'clock to 2 3 a.m. Oh, okay. That's my writing oh. time. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That yeah. is my study time in school. I'm still on it, you know, oh, wow. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. And like your your students, are they are they fans of your work? Are they do they? Uh, it's so difficult getting 
children invested in books. They've all told me they want to read my books. Of course. But none of them is willing to pay for it. <laughs> um, and I've given books out to children for free, and you would never get those books back. So it's, I don't give out books anymore to free. Okay. I've had like the two, I have this one girl in my class who loves to read. Um, she read my entire series over the weekend. So she, she's a big fan. And then I started a reading club in school. Nice. So whenever I go speak at literary festivals, I take the whole reading club with me. Oh, cool. That's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. I love that you're bringing the two worlds together. Like, that's really great. Yeah, so sharing your, like, I feel like, passion. Um, that's what I'm part of what I'm speaking on. I believe yeah. fantasy is important for innovation. Yeah. If you think of, um, let's say, gaming, creating games, you need the knowledge from coding and how to, uh, 3D design. Yeah. Yeah. That is part of non-fiction. Yeah. But then the fictional world is where your imagination comes and brings forth. So um, in South Africa, fiction is about 20% of books sold, whereas non-fiction is 80%. Okay. So fiction, that's why we struggle with innovation and patents in South yeah. Africa, because they don't have that fan, that imagination vote. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to encourage more yeah. fantasy and adventure. Um, it's so interesting because it's also like, it's like I think maybe... We're much older, and like we, yeah. we were kids, it was a lot of like just go play and make up stories in your own mind. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, perfect. Yeah, exactly. No, they don't do that anymore. <laughs> now they'll go and watch TV. Yeah, there's um, content. And for them. Everybody loves watching fantasy, but the thing when you watch fantasy is you are imagining. You, you know, there's no imagination. You're, you're just yeah, seeing you're just someone watching, else's yeah. imagination. Yeah. And you read Whereas it, it's you're like reading you make it, it up. You have it. to make it up, yeah. and you are more focused yeah. when you read a book. Exactly. Yeah. So you learn also how to focus that. Yeah. Sit still. Yeah, yeah. And to concentrate. Exactly. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, it's such a beautiful art that's really like slowly like losing grip of okay? Exactly. Yeah, I would yeah, it seems as though yeah, would like to And if you look at not. if you look at all the innovative people, they love reading fantasy. Yeah. Elon yeah. Musk, Jeff Bezos, um Mark Zuckerberg, they love reading fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Not just watching, reading fantasy yeah, yeah. because it develops imagination yeah. in them. And it's yeah. a great escapism as well. Exactly. Like it's like just going to your own little world that you've made up. If, they, if you um, go to a therapist, a lot of them will tell you either journal or read fantasy yeah. because it's an escape. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I yeah. think it was J.R. Tolkien who said it is a soldier's duty to escape. So if yeah. you're in this oh. world where you feel trapped, it is your duty to find a way to escape. Find, it, find a way. Yeah. So, you know, I it's believe that's what fantasy cool. is. Some deep words there. I love oh, this. Today stuff. is a good day. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's coming with incredible gems. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we just want to wish you the best of luck today. And we hope you sell many, many books. I'm and sure we you hope will. you make more books. Yeah. And um, obviously, we'll follow you and see how your journey continues. I'm planning. Thank you very much. But yeah, thank you for joining us. I really so appreciate you taking the time. Doing very well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah. you so much. Got to subscribe. <laughs> All right. Thanks so Thank much. you.